If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Additionally, if you would like to request novels and access my Google Drive where I have 200 plus audiobooks, then you can join my Patreon, link is also provided in the description. Chapter 1, Transmigration, Demon Slayer World Ah. Hey. Hey. Ryu's eyes snapped open. Waking from an unknown nightmare, he's covered in a cold sweat, shaking and heart pounding. He looked around the room, suspicious and paranoid. Where am I? Wait, who am I? Confusion clouded his eyes while unfamiliar memories surged into his mind causing him to scream in pain. After a few seconds of gritting his teeth and enduring the pain, clarity returned to his eyes. I am Ryu, I have transmigrated into this world. It took him a few minutes to completely absorb the memory of his predecessor. The memories become so vivid in his mind as if he had lived another life, more like two souls of a different world fused into one. He didn't know how the previous owner of this body died as he had no memories regarding that. Just the same, he didn't remember how he died on Earth. Congratulations, host, on your successful transmigration. Infinite Anime System is at your service. System. Ryu called intuitively. Yes, host. The mechanical voice sounded in his mind. Where am I? With the memory, he had a vague guess. But, he needed someone to confirm it. As you guessed, you are currently in Demon Slayer World. The system responded, affirming his guess. Ryu nodded his head and accepted the reality as he wasn't an ordinary person in his previous life. System, how did I die on Earth? I am sorry, host. I can't answer your question as your current level and authority are insufficient. If you need to know the answer, complete two or more primary objectives of the system. Is there any chance I can return to Earth? Ryu asked. Yes. Though everything that happened to him is a mystery that answer is everything he needed. With a calm mind, he recollected the memories of the previous owner of this body. His parents died a year back when a demon attacked their home. To protect him, they stayed back and fought bravely before losing their lives. Their sacrifice let the previous owner of the body escape. Getting up to his feet, Ryu came out of the small wooden house. He was stunned by the breathtaking scenery and fresh air that rejuvenates one's mind. It was morning, and the sky was clear without any clouds. His wooden house was situated along the hillside with a huge blue lake in the front. Ryu, why are you up so late today? Just as he was enjoying the scenery, a kind voice came from his left. Uncle Daishi, morning. I didn't sleep well last night, so I overslept. Ryu replied with a smile. Amen. If you are not feeling well, take a rest for the day. Saying this, Daishi went into his house carrying a bunch of stones. Uncle Daishi is a kind person and a blacksmith. It was only thanks to him that the previous owner was able to live through today by collecting wood and ores. Glancing at the thirty or so houses situated around, Ryu walked along the familiar path and hiked the mountain to reach his favorite spot where he usually hangs out. When he reached it, he saw a cascade waterfall surrounded by rocks on three sides with a small pond below it. What a nice place! As he neared the pond, Ryu saw his reflection for the first time. He had a pale complexion and an average height of 5'6". He had unruly black hair reaching his shoulders while some bangs slipped above his eyes in an uneven fringe. He had thin eyebrows with sharp bluish-black eyes that were moderately large. If I had some muscles and height, it would be perfect. After walking around the area and making sure there was no one around, Ryu called the system in his mind. System, tell me about the functions you have. Yes, host. The system replied and showed him a status panel. Name, Ryu. Race, Ordinary Human. Age, 16. Ability, None. World, Demon Slayer. Demon Points, Zero. Primary Objective, Kill Muse and Kibutsuji. Reward, System Level Up and Transmigrate to the Next Anime World. Infinite Anime System will help you transmigrate to different anime worlds once you complete the primary objective of each world. What happens if I fail to complete the primary objective? You will age and die while the system will erase itself after your death. The system replied in a mechanical voice. Good. Do I get a beginner's reward? Ryu asked. Yes. In fact, you will get one free lucky draw every time you transmigrate into a new world. The system responded while a lucky draw wheel materialized in his mind. The lucky draw wheel had eight different rewards. Ryu recognized each and every one. One sun breathing style too. 
Nikaran Sword 3. Soru and Tekai 4. Darkness Breathing Style 5. Nature Breathing Style 6. Armament Haki 7. 3 Tomo Sharingan 8. Transparent World. Looking at all the rewards, Ryu's excited but it's a pity, he can only get one. It would be good if it's a sun breathing style. He knew the importance of breathing styles in the world of demon slayers. To activate the lucky draw, just say the word, spin. The system voice reminded. Spin, Ryu uttered, his tone filled with anticipation. As the lucky wheel spun before him, his heart raced with excitement. With each rotation, he murmured his desired reward like a mantra, sun breathing style, sun breathing style, sun breathing style. But contrary to his expectation, the lucky wheel stopped at nature breathing style shattering his expectancies. Fuck, did I end up with the worst one? Ryu cursed under his breath and asked the system, which reward is considered valuable in the lucky draw? It's armament hacky, as it increases your overall strength. If practiced to the highest level, you can kill Musen with a single punch. The system responded. What's the next valuable one after armament hacky? Ryu asked, believing it would be sun breathing or three tomo sharingan. It's the nature breathing style that the host obtained, the system confirmed. What? Really? Ryu exclaimed in surprise. Yes, the system replied. Nature breathing style will help the host to remold your body and improve both your strength and skill. Do you want to obtain the reward? Yes, Ryu replied eagerly. As soon as he gave his affirmation, a flood of information regarding nature breathing was imprinted in his mind. Glancing at the nature breathing, Ryu clenched his fist. He didn't expect the breathing style to be so powerful, it's even more powerful than the legendary sun breathing style created by Yoriichi Tsuchikuni himself. With this breathing style, I have the power to defeat Musen. Chapter 2, Nature Breathing Style Minus 1 as an ordinary human without innate strength or special talent, his primary objective is to train and improve his body enough to fight the demons. Thankfully, his nature breathing style provides all the help he needs. After a quick look, he pretty much understood what kind of breathing style he had obtained. Nature breathing. It's completely different from all the breathing styles derived from sun breathing. Essentially, it focuses on pure strength, skill, and the elements of nature. There are nine forms in the nature breathing style along with a special breathing pattern. When one performs the nature breathing style with a specific breathing pattern, they can draw a strand of natural energy present in the world and make use of it to improve their strength. However, it's not that easy to achieve. It requires constant practice, mastery, and an understanding of nature. System, show me the status panel. Name, Ryu. Race, Ordinary Human. Skill, Nature Breathing, Unranked 0-5. Demon points, zero. System, how can I earn the demon points? Ryu inquired. Host needs to kill a demon to activate the system functions. The system responded. Okay. Why does it show unranked in the skill section? Ryu asked, puzzled. Nature breathing has levels based on your mastery, ranking from unranked, basic, intermediate, advanced, and proficient. Each level determines your strength and ability to fight the demons. Dash Ordinary Demon, Unranked. Dash Demon with Special Abilities, Basic. Dash Lower Moon, Intermediate. Dash Upper Moon, Advanced. Dash Demon Progenitor, Proficient. What time period have I transmigrated into? Ryu asked, concerned about the time period. There are three years remaining until the start of the series. Good, Ryu gathered his thoughts and contemplated. To activate the system functions, he needed to kill a demon. However, without sufficient strength and skill, it would be impossible to kill a demon even if it's an ordinary one. He possessed an innate advantage in training his body and sword skills. On Earth, both of his parents were remarkable individuals, his father, a special forces officer, and his mother, a kendo grandmaster who ran a kendo academy. From birth, they both trained him in their respective fields. His father focused on honing his body and senses, while his mother imparted sword skills to him. With the nature breathing style acquired from the system, he believe it won't be a problem for him to enhance his strength in a short period of time. Let's begin the training. Sitting in a lotus position, Ryu closed his eyes and began following the specific breathing pattern of nature breathing. In the series, the ordinary total concentration breathing expands the user's lung capacity, enabling oxygen to reach every cell in the body, 
thus enhancing blood circulation and heart rate. This elevates physical and mental abilities to their peak. However, Ryu's breathing method differed slightly. Not even a minute had passed before Ryu let out a violent cough, clutching his chest in pain. This breathing is challenging with my body so weak. I need to improve my basic attributes first. He wasn't unfamiliar with breathing techniques, having practiced one during his childhood on Earth. Yet, the method provided by the system proved exceedingly difficult. It seems rushing won't work. I'll need to take it slow. Deciding on his course of action, Ryu stood up and began jogging around the mountain. While running, he also collected wood and searched for valuable ore. He needs to give them to Uncle Daisy for money and food. After jogging for an hour, Ryu did some basic exercises without overtaxing his body. Around noon, he found a valuable ore on the rock surface in the mountains. He didn't know what it was, but that didn't stop him from unearthing them. To his surprise, he found more of them as he shoveled the outer layer. After remembering the place and filling the bucket bag on his back with the oars, Ryu descended the mountain and went to find Uncle Daishi. It's iron sand, and it seems exceptionally pure. If I combine it with copper, I can create precious jewel steel. Ryu, you are very lucky today. Did you see more such things where you discovered them? Daishi spoke in an excited voice. Yes, Ryu confirmed. Good. Starting tomorrow, focus on collecting this iron ore instead of wood. With this, you won't have to worry about money or food, Daishi suggested. Ryu nodded his head and spoke, Uncle Daishi, I need a few things. Tell me, what do you need? Daishi let out a happy laugh and asked. Standing around six feet with bulging muscles and short black hair, no one would guess this Uncle Daishi is a 56-year-old man. Ryu mentioned some of the things that are needed for training along with one katana and a heavy sword of extreme weight. Why do you need those things? Uncle Daishi asked with his eyebrows raised. I am going to train myself to hunt demons. Ryu replied. After hesitating for a second, Daishi asked, Why the sudden change of heart? It's not sudden, Uncle Daishi. It's been some time since I slept well. Every time I close my eyes, the scream of my parents and a vision of them being killed by the demon comes to my mind. If I don't avenge them, I don't think I can go on living. It's better to face it bravely than to cower in fear somewhere. You might die. Daishi spoke sharply. It doesn't matter, Ryu replied firmly. He wasn't exaggerating. He didn't just inherit the previous owner's memory, he also inherited his feelings, emotions, and the menacing presence of the demon that evokes fear. If he doesn't avenge by killing the demons, there's a chance that feelings will transform into remorse. And, Ryu won't allow that. Seeing his determined face, Uncle Daishi sighed. So be it. If you need any help, don't hesitate to ask me. Okay, Ryu affirmed. Chapter 3, Nature Breathing Style, 2 Two months passed by. Swish. Ryu stood bare-chested with his hair fluttering in the breeze as he practiced his nature breathing style. He swung his long sword made of heavy stone in a certain rhythm. Unlike two months ago, his entire physique has undergone a remarkable transformation, his previous average form has transformed into a ripped physique. Such transformation isn't humanly possible in two months but thanks to the breathing method, he was able to absorb some kind of energy present in the world to replenish his muscles. In the first month, he just trained his body and familiarized himself with the breathing pattern and different sword styles. From the next month, he started practicing the breathing method and style. After a month of practice, he can execute the nine forms of nature breathing but to bring out its true potential he needs to incorporate them with the breathing pattern. It was extremely difficult. Every time he fails to maintain his breathing method when his practice reaches the ninth form, dance in the void. It's the same this time. Ryu's stone sword fell to the ground as he stood gasping for air, entirely exhausted. Failure didn't frustrate him. In fact, if he practiced with a normal sword then he may have completed the last form but doing so would make his practice harder in later stages. For a month, he persisted so that he could complete all the forms of his breathing style in one fell swoop. Now the time has come for him to switch to the ordinary sword. Ryu took a short break to recover his fatigue before taking out the standard-sized katana that is dull gray in color. Holding the katana, he had a feeling of nostalgia. On Earth, he's proficient in sword skills as his mother, who's a kendo grandmaster, trained him from a young age. Though his sword skills are enough to fight the ordinary demons, they won't be of much help when he faces demons that have special abilities. For that, 
he needs to master his breathing method and style. Unlike the heavy sword that he had been slashing for the past month, holding the metal sword felt extremely light as that of a feather. After testing some simple sword moves, he got the hang of switching from heavy to metal sword. Swish the sound of something tearing the air came every time Ryu swung his sword. All right, let's start. Relaxing his state of mind, Ryu breathed in a specific pattern as he slashed his sword horizontally. First form, wind slash. The slash looked simple and elegant but generated an air pressure that pushed the dirt and dry leaves around. Second form, current of the ocean. Followed by the first form, Ryu took a step back while swinging his sword in a circular motion. Unlike the first form, this move lacked strength but it was similar to calm before the storm. Third form, setting sun Ryu did a full circle with his left foot while slashing his sword downwards diagonally in a straight line. Fourth form, Mother Earth with slight pressure on his feet, he leaped into the air before slashing his sword downward. Fifth form, Lightning Storm kicking the air in mid-air, Ryu dashed forward at extreme speed while slashing his sword multiple times in diverse styles. Sixth form, Shadow World Ryu maneuvered in a certain pattern as if he were a shadow itself. This move didn't have any sword styles as it's supposed to be combined with the next form. Seventh form, Gravity Rift coming out of the sixth form, Ryu performed a singular downward slash utilizing every ounce of his arm strength. Eighth form, Time Zone When Ryu reaches this step, his breathing pattern changes enhancing his senses and speed to another level. The drastic rise in perception and speed gave him the feeling of being invincible, it was as if time itself stopped in his eyes. It's also the reason why he wasn't able to perform the next move as this form drains his strength to zero. There's no specific sword style in this form, so he can use any of the above forms to complete the step and move on to the next form. Performing a horizontal slash, Ryu hurriedly switched to his seventh form. Ninth form, Dance of the Void This form is the combination of the above eight forms but it ought to be performed in a reverse manner. Exhaling his breathing in a specific pattern, Ryu performed a series of forms while using every ounce of his willpower to fight the exhaustion that was assaulting him so that he wouldn't either drop his blade or drop to the ground. Swish. As soon as he completed his first form, wind slash, Ryu dropped to the ground, gasping for air and completely exhausted. But, a strand of mysterious energy seeped into his body from nowhere before bursting through every part of his being. The exhaustion disappeared, replaced by a feeling of revitalizing. Ryu could feel his flesh and bones being strengthened. But, the magical feeling didn't last for even five seconds before it disappeared completely. Oh shit. I forgot to maintain my breathing method Ryu cursed before opening his system panel to see if there was any change. Name, Ryu. Race, Ordinary Human. Skill, Nature Breathing, Unranked One-Fifth. Demon Points, Zero. As he expected, there was change. In the skill section, his nature breathing is up by one point. I did it. After two months of non-stop training and practice, he finally managed to raise his experience in the nature breathing style. Though it's just one point, he could feel the difference. Ryu laughed aloud, feeling happy. He had taken the first step on the path of becoming strong. He then remembered the magical feeling, is it natural energy? He then asked the system, system, is this natural energy similar to one in Naruto world? Yes. Natural energy is present in every world where there's life. Your nature breathing is created with natural energy as the base. But why does it improve my body? Ryu asked as it's unlike what's shown in the Naruto series. Nature breathing style is the product of the system and its uses are superior to what the host has learned from watching Naruto. To feel its wonders, practice it to the highest level. Ryu has the feeling of being mocked by the system. It was as if, just because you don't know, doesn't mean it can't be accomplished, the system was saying. Chapter 4, Training Restored to his peak state, Ryu once again started practicing his breathing style from the first form. Like last time, a strand of natural energy seeped into his body as soon as he completed the nine forms. The natural energy broke into tiny fragments and coursed through every part of his body, strengthening his flesh, bones, and blood vessels. When Ryu considered practicing again, he felt a slight pain in his lungs. My body is still not strong enough to perform the nature breathing style continuously. Realizing he had done enough for the day, he exercised his body and stretched for a while before proceeding to excavate more iron ores. After all, he depended on them for food and clothing. Ryu then descended the mountain and walked toward Uncle Daishi's home. Upon reaching his house, he knocked on the door. 
After a minute, Daishi opened the door and welcomed him inside. Ryu, place the oars over there. I need your help with something. Sure, Uncle Daishi. Both of them walked to the backyard where Daishi usually did his blacksmithing work. Uncle Daishi was capable of creating a variety of weapons, but he mainly focused on producing special iron used for making weapons and selling it. He only forged a weapon upon special request. Right now, he was making a sword for a friend. The process had reached the second stage, purifying the steel. In this stage, they needed to heat and bend the steel countless times to remove impurities, which was a crucial step. Since Ryu had great muscle strength, he assisted Uncle Daishi in this process. Day turned to night as Daishi and Ryu finished the hammering process. As a reward, Daishi cooked and provided Ryu with a sumptuous dinner. As always, your food tastes great, Uncle Daishi. Instead of blacksmithing, I think you should open a restaurant. Ryu commented, finishing the last bowl of rice. You brat, you've changed a lot recently. You're brimming with vitality and strength. Looks like you weren't joking when you said that. Uncle Daishi sighed. No, Ryu replied. Sigh. Demons have been ravaging this land for thousands of years. Countless people have lost their families and lives at their hands. If not for demon slayers, this land would have turned into hell long ago. I heard that only sunlight and a special sword can kill a demon. If we somehow obtain the ore used to make that special sword, I can at least help you forge a weapon that can kill demons. I am currently searching for that ore. Once I find it, you'll be the first person I come to, Ryu promised. Haha. <laughs> if you can find that ore, I will use everything I've learned in my life to create the perfect sword for you. Good. Ryu responded. Early morning. After running up and down the mountain for two hours, Ryu came to his usual spot to exercise and stretch his body. Completing them, he walked before a medium-sized boulder. Grabbing the rope that bounds the boulder, Ryu placed the rope over his shoulder and used every ounce of his strength to pull it. To his surprise, he was able to drag them with half of his strength. He immediately understood his strength had grown because of the natural energy. It's time to switch to a larger one. Ryu then switched his training to stone throwing. Holding a stone that weighs around 30 kilograms, he did some simple movements mimicking his sword moves and threw them over his head. He repeated the process 20 times before coming to a stop. Till noon, he did all kinds of exercises that would improve his arm and leg strength with some yoga techniques for flexibility. Drawing out his sword, Ryu walked to a nearby tree and slashed. With a single swing of his sword, the tree that had a huge trunk was cut into two. My skills are still there he thought and set his sight on the boulder that he uses for practice. Inhaling a breath of air, Ryu gripped his word tightly and sprinted forward before slashing at the huge boulder. He failed to hack the boulder into two in a single strike. His sword had cut one third of the boulder, but it was not enough as this boulder was much smaller than the one Tanjiro cut after his two-year training. Ryu set a small goal. The day I cut the boulder larger than Tanjiro did, is the day I set out to hunt for the demons. Days passed into weeks weeks passed into months. Six months passed by as Ryu kept on training his body, breathing method, his sword skills, and nature breathing style. Name, Ryu. Race, Ordinary Human. Skill, Nature Breathing, Unranked Four-Fifths. Demon Points, Zero. He was just one point away from reaching the basic level in his nature breathing style. But, he couldn't break past the limit no matter how much he trained. Ryu has grasped the nature breathing method but he's still far away from mastering it to the level where he can constantly maintain the breathing state during the morning, noon, and night, and even while sleeping. It's too difficult and needs constant practice. Apart from that, the major change came from his physique. He has grown tall, reaching 6'3 feet in height while his black hair has grown past his shoulder. His entire body brimmed with strength and vitality. With his current strength, it won't be a problem for him to fight against some ordinary demons. He also completed his small goal a month back, cutting a huge boulder with a single sword strike. The reason why he hadn't left yet, is because he was waiting for Uncle Daishi to finish something. Since he doesn't have the near Chiran sword, it won't be easy to kill the demons. His only option is to fight the demon till sunrise or contain them with something. He asked Uncle Daishi to make things that would help him arrest the demon until sunrise. And, the things he asked for were finished last night so he plans to set out today. Cleaning himself, Ryu wore the new dark blue long-sleeved shirt and black pants that he bought a few days ago. He also cut his long hair to shoulder length. 
it's time to go. Chapter 5, Hair Demon Ryu, be careful. If you fail to defeat the demon, don't be stubborn, at least try to save your life. Uncle Daishi patted his shoulder and said. Don't worry, Uncle Daishi. I will be back in a few days. Ryu smiled and headed out, carrying the sword and weapons forged by Uncle Daishi. As Daishi watched, Ryu's figure disappeared from his view in a few seconds. I hope nothing happens to you. Ryu sprinted in the direction where the previous owner's home was located. Around the evening, he reached the area. I am back. From a distance, he could see twenty or so Gosho structure houses spread in a small plain surrounded by brilliant shades of green. As he approached the previous owner of the body's home, he observed the entire village was abandoned. Probably, the people left this place after the demon attack. With the doors already destroyed, Ryu easily entered the wooden house that was entangled in cobwebs. It looked desolate without anyone taking care of it. The memories of him living here with his parents flashed past his eyes. As he walked out of the house, he saw two stone graves in the distance. Demon slayers should have come after the incident. If they had arrived sooner. Ryu shook his head as there was no point in mulling over the past. Kneeling before the grave, Ryu prayed. Mother, father, I hope both of you are living well on the other side. Though I am not your son, I consider you as my parents. I will avenge your deaths by eradicating the demons. Leaving the village, Ryu headed north. On his way, he heard a traveler talking about a demon that killed a family yesterday. The location is just a few kilometers away. By the time he reached the location, the sun had begun to set welcoming the night. But to Ryu's surprise, he saw two men wearing demon slayer inspecting the area. Ryu watched everything from a distance without interfering with their work. It should be an ordinary demon since the demon slayer corps only sent the two of them. From their actions and expressions, he concluded they were new, possibly, they just become demon slayers. Still, they are knowledgeable when it comes to demons. They observed the traces and tracked the demon outside of the town. It didn't take long for them to find the demon inside a house surrounded by a rice field. When they opened the door, they were shocked to find a demon feeding on two dead people, one woman and a child. The demon is a pale, young woman appearing in her mid-twenties and of average height. She had long dark blue hair, prominent fangs and sharp nails common to demons. As soon as the demon slayers appeared, the demon turned its attention to them. Interrupting my meal, you demon slayers should die. Saying this, she pounced on them. One of the demon slayers narrowly dodged the attack by leaping sideways while the other one was kicked away. They weren't able to react to the sudden attack because of the menacing aura and fear induced by the demon. Suzuki. The one who dodged the attack yelled and slashed his knicker and sword at the demon. The demon slayer called Suzuki coughed a mouthful of blood and shouted, Hashiko, it's not an ordinary demon. Be careful. First form, Dust Whirlwind Cutter. Without heeding Suzuki's advice, Hashiko dashed forward at extreme speed and slashed continuously in a horizontal cyclone pattern. Weak. The female demon commented while her long blue hair came alive and surrounded her body blocking the incoming attack. Her hair then tangled together to produce around ten or so tendrils made of hair that had sharp tips. Five of them whipped at the demon slayer called Hashiko the next second. But, before it could lash at him the demon slayer called Suzuki came to his aid and cut the hair tendrils with his knicker and sword. But, the demon's hair regenerated the next second. Observing their attacks, Ryu knew that both of them were users of the wind-breathing style. Both the demon slayers fought hard, putting their lives on the line but they couldn't even approach the demon because of the tendrils. Not even half an hour passed, but they were wounded. They aren't strong enough. If I don't do something, they will lose their lives. Ryu was nervous but at the same time thrilled to fight such a supernatural creature. On Earth, his father and mother honed his fighting skills from childhood. Since Earth is a peaceful society, he couldn't utilize his ability in an actual battle. Finally, he has an opportunity to test his strength. With a determined face, Ryu came out of his hiding. Sixth Form, Shadow World His form blended with the shadow as he rushed towards the female demon. Both the demon slayers were in a bad position, trying their best to avoid the attacks. But the long fighting exhausted their stamina and they also lost blood due to piercing wounds. The demon's hair suppressed their movements by binding the hands and legs. I am going to enjoy feasting your brains. The female demon laughed softly, licking her lips. She then readied her tendrils to pierce the head of two demon slayers. Just as they thought they were going to die, 
a shadowy figure appeared out of nowhere and cut the hair that bound the two of them before chopping the head of the demon. Ryu came out of the shadow world and kicked the head of the terrifying demon far away. The demon slayers Hashiko and Suzuki were stunned by the sudden change that happened in a blink of an eye but they soon noticed the abnormality. The body of the demon isn't dying. The demon slayers looked at Ryu who covered his face with a white mask. Holding the gleaming katana in his hand, he had an air of mysteriousness around him and looked powerful. Give me your sword. The demon isn't dead yet, my sword is an ordinary katana. Ryu asked, glancing at Hashiko and Suzuki. What? The demon slayers looked confused. How could such a strong person be without a Nikaran sword? Tossing the useless thought aside, Suzuki threw his Nikaran sword to Ryu. Chapter 6, First Kill Holding the Nikaran sword, Ryu played with it by spinning it around before swinging the sword to counter the incoming hair tendril attack. The female demon's head, which had been kicked away by him, returned with the help of her hair. In no time, she reattached her head to her neck. The demon had a look of terror on her face. In fact, she was scared senseless when her head was lopped off and thought she had died for sure. You. I am going to kill you. The female demon roared with a crazed expression, emanating a terrifying pressure that intimidated the two demon slayers. As a demon with inhuman abilities, she felt humiliated when her head was chopped off and enraged by the fact that she was frightened by a mere human. Unfazed by the ominous aura released by the demon, Ryu pointed the Nikaran sword at the demon and uttered, come. Without any hesitation, the female demon dashed forward at extreme speed while her hair tendrils moved erratically and shot at him from various directions. Second form, current of the ocean facing the attacks, Ryu took a step back and swung his sword in a circular motion. The sword swing looked serene without any effect but when the sword finished the full circle there was a sudden heaviness in the air. The next moment, a water vortex resembling an ocean whirlpool arose and spread outward, obliterating the demon's attack and everything in its path. Within a 25-meter radius, the powerful whirlpool ravaged everything, but the female demon managed to escape with just a few sword cuts, which healed almost instantly. What a powerful sword style! Hashiko exclaimed. He's strong. Suzuki commented. Ryu looked at the demon and thought, my strength and skills are lacking. This move could have decapitated the demon if I were slightly more powerful. The demon's hair was extremely resilient acting as a shield to block incoming attacks and recovering almost instantly. After clashing with the demon, he could tell that the female demon hadn't reached the stage of using blood demon arts. Her strength was somewhere between that of an ordinary demon and a special demon with abilities. Crack! Applying pressure to his feet, Ryu rushed towards the demon. First form, wind slash he slashed his sword which generated a wind blade that cut the demon's tendrils with ease. But, Ryu didn't use this opportunity to finish off the demon. He battled the demon with other forms present in his breathing style. Why didn't he behead the demon? He could have killed it just now. Hashiko asked with his fist clenched. He's using the demon to improve his breathing style, Suzuki remarked, at a loss for words. The demon used her inhuman strength, speed and reflexes to attack Ryu with the intent to kill, but he moved like a nimble monkey, evading every strike. Ryu parried her attacks with fast reflexes and swift sword movements. As he continued to dominate the battle, the female demon began to wonder if he was truly human. The battle raged on for an hour, yet the female demon noticed that the human showed no signs of exhaustion, and she hadn't landed a single vital blow. Is he really human? How can he fight for so long without any weariness? Hashiko, the demon slayer, gaped in astonishment. Did you notice the breathing style he uses? Suzuki asked. Yes. His breathing style is unusual. It incorporates elements of wind, water, fire, earth, and some other style I can't identify, Hashiko replied. On the other side, the female demon felt as though she was being toyed with. She was used to playing with humans, not the other way around. I am going to kill you. I am going to kill you, she screamed, losing her sanity to anger. She shot her tendrils with sharp tips madly, her rage enhanced her abilities and further amplified the speed of her attacks. Accustomed to the demon's strength and speed, Ryu effortlessly dodged her assaults. I have played enough. It's time to finish this. Eighth form, time zone time came still in Ryu's eyes as his senses and speed rose to the limit. By the time the demon reacted, Ryu had walked past her while a cut mark appeared on her neck. The next second, her head slid from her body and fell to the ground. Ah! I can finally go and meet my husband slowly, the demon's entire body crumpled to dust and disappeared in the wind. 
From the outside, it would seem as if Ryu is a monster with endless stamina who can fight a demon for a long period of time. But, only he knew his state. His entire body was exhausted to the limit, drained of physical energy. Maintaining nature breathing during the battle was far more difficult than he had anticipated. He was stronger than the demon, but it was just an ordinary one. He needed to train more and increase his strength further. Tossing the Nikaran sword back to Suzuki, Ryu leaped high into the air and disappeared into the darkness of the night. Wait. Tell us your name. Hashiko shouted, but there was no reply. Who is he? He didn't even tell us his name. It doesn't matter. We'll report everything that happened as it is, Suzuki said. Ryu ran for some time before stopping at a secluded place. He hadn't conversed with the Demon Slayers because he wasn't ready to join the Demon Slayer Corps yet. After ensuring no one was nearby, he relaxed and checked the system panel. As soon as he killed the demon, the system notified him. Name, Ryu. Race, Ordinary Human. Skill, Nature Breathing, Unranked 4 slash 5 plus. Demon Points, 1. Achievement, First Demon Kill. Reward, 1 Lucky Draw and Activation of System Functions. System, What Functions Have Been Activated? Ryu asked. First, Demon Points. Now, you can earn demon points by hunting demons. You can use them to advance your skills. For your information, by killing an ordinary demon, you will earn a 1 demon point. Special demons, 2 points. Lower moon, 5 points. Upper moon, 10 points. Second, the task function is officially active. From now on, the system will issue tasks randomly, which you can complete to earn rewards. Chapter 7, Yubayashiki Finally. I can upgrade my breathing style to the basic level with the demon point. Ryu thought and looked at the lucky draw he got, slightly excited. He got the nature breathing style from the lucky draw. If he gets another skill on PAR with his breathing style, his strength will soar. But, Ryu's excitement doused when he saw the rewards present in the lucky draw wheel. One sun breathing style 2. No reward 3. Tekai 4. No reward 5. Sora 6. No reward 7. Observation Hacky 8. Transparent World. Out of 8 options, there are 3 no rewards while the other rewards aren't that luxurious except Observation Hacky. System, what's the meaning of this? Why is the lucky draw different from last time? Host, the first lucky draw you get after transmigration is special while the other lucky draws are ordinary ones. The system replied in a mechanical voice with no emotion. Fine. Spin the lucky draw. Ryu spoke, grinding his teeth. After spinning for a few seconds, the lucky wheel stopped at number 3 Tekai. Since he had no expectations, Ryu felt better when he got a skill. Something is better than nothing. After his approval, the system transmitted the reward to his mind of how to practice Tekai. Tekai hardens the user's muscles to the level of iron. Not just defense, but it also enhances one's attack significantly. In one piece, some Tekai masters were able to fight on PAR with armament hacky users. It's a useful skill. With Tekai, I don't need to fear demons easily injuring my body. Ryu mused. At the same time, he knows Tekai is directly related to his physical strength, so to maximize the benefit of Tekai, he needs to train and improve his physique. Ryu then used the demon point and upgraded his nature breathing to the basic level from unranked. Name, Ryu. Race, Ordinary Human. Skill, Nature Breathing, Basic 0 slash 10. Demon Points, 0. As soon as his Nature Breathing reached the basic level, he felt as if he practiced the breathing style countless times. His breathing pattern was enhanced while some of the forms that he couldn't execute properly became clear to him. At that moment, the system's voice sounded in his mind. New task is released. Host, please check the details in the task bar. Task, Obtain the Rare Ore. Rainbow-colored crystal. Details, the ore can be found in Aoshima, located approximately 650 kilometers away. Reward, a sword that can slay demons system made. Looking at the task, Ryu was puzzled since the system gave him a task to find an ore but also mentioned its location. Is there any difficulty in this? When he asked, the system replied. Host, the mentioned location is located underwater. It won't be easy to obtain it if you don't master the concept of total concentration breathing, constant. I see. In the end, 
everything comes to strength. Ryu sighed and raced back to his home. It was morning when Ryu reached home. When Uncle Daishi saw his return, he exclaimed while his worrying expression eased. Thank God. You returned safely. Uncle Daishi, I told you I would return safely. Ryu shrugged but seeing Daishi worried for him warmed his heart. So, did you kill the demon? Uncle Daishi asked. Yes, Ryu replied and recounted his experience of how he killed the demon. Good. Ryu, you should join the Demon Slayer Corps. They know about the demons more than you do. With their help, you would be safe even if you encounter a demon. Daishi advised. I know, Uncle Daishi. I will join after some time. Ryu replied. After resting for a day, Ryu left the house after saying goodbye to Uncle Daishi. He plans to travel to the location mentioned by the system to complete his task. At the same time, Yubayashiki Mansion. Kaguya Yubayashiki looked at the report and smiled. He had light skin, black shoulder-length hair, and a curse mark that covered his left eye region. Unlike in the series, the curse mark hasn't completely spread on his face. He looked elegant and simple with a slight smile on his face. A masked man who isn't from Demon Slayer Corps killed a demon with ease. But, he didn't want to join the Corps. Interesting man. Kaguya spoke gently. Master, do you want him to join the Demon Slayer Corps? I can go in person. Jimmy Iheim Jima, the stone Hashira who was present in the mansion asked. No need. All the paths with the same goal lead to the same destination. Tell Hash IRAs about this person, if they meet by coincidence, they can invite him to the Demon Slayer Corps. Kaguya spoke. Yes. After a week of traveling, Ryu finally reached the place mentioned by the system, there he saw a steep sea cliff that abuts the blue ocean. Appreciating the beauty of the place, he explored the area. He soon found a barren mountain peak along the coastline that stood out from the lush mountain region. With a quick sprint, he reached the top of the barren mountain where he saw a beautiful lake which is unusually deep blue in color. Since he was looking from above, he could tell the lake was deep and clear with no to little sediments. System, are you sure there's no danger inside? Ryu asked as he could tell it was a volcanic mountain from the traces. Host, don't worry. The lake formed naturally after a volcano collapsed following an eruption. The water comes mostly from rainfall and snow. The system issued this task to test your breathing technique and the pressure your human body can endure. Not to kill you mindlessly. The system emotionlessly replied. I see Ryu uttered, took off his clothes, and directly dived into the lake. Chapter 8, Sword, Akashuchi Gasp Coming out of the water, Ryu gasped for air. After staying inside the water for 10 minutes, he felt suffocated unable to maintain his breathing routine. Even with his experience, he failed as diving deep put pressure on the body. It's different. It seems like I need to learn many things. But, this new experience taught him something. During the last minute underwater, he felt desperate. At that moment, his body functioned without his will, his lungs expanded while blood moved to the vital parts. I dived only 30 to 35 meters but I already started to feel the water pressure. If I have to dive deeper, I need to strengthen my body and master the breathing method. Ryu mused. The increased water pressure started compressing his lungs down smaller and smaller. Any further, it will damage his body. Looks like it will take time. This system task is not easy to achieve. From the next day onwards, Ryu began rigorous training, focusing on his breathing style and tekai. Time passed by. Aside from practicing his nature breathing style and tekai, Ryu practiced pranayama, an ancient yoga breath technique that helps in the control of breath. He repeated the practice every day with strict discipline and intense concentration. After a month, Ryu finally managed to successfully maintain the breathing technique for an entire day without stopping during sleep eating, or training. After another few days of practice, he did it. Total concentration, constant. It drastically improved his physical strength. Thanks to that, he was able to dive 80 meters and hold his breath for half an hour. Still, bearing the atmospheric pressure is pretty hard. Such pressure helped him to train his tekai. As he descends deeper, the atmospheric pressure increases. It was pretty much black down there with no light. At first, the gloom intimidated him but he persisted and overcame it. It takes him 10 minutes to descend 80 meters, and 15 minutes to ascend the same distance. He can't descend too sharply as the sudden change in pressure will harm his body. 
it can only be done step by step with patience. The system is good with the tasks. Ryu could feel himself growing stronger as he persisted in diving deeper. According to the map provided by the system, he needs to dive 120 meters down from the surface to get the crystal. Currently, he can't do it. Another three months passed. Deep in the lake, Ryu held a rainbow-colored crystal in his hand that illuminated the blackness with its divine multicolor radiance. Wow, it looks amazing. Observing the crystal for a few seconds, he let the system take it. The crystal disappeared from his hand while a ding sounded in his mind. Task complete, obtained the rare ore, rainbow-colored crystal. Reward, a sword that can slay demons system made. Reaching the surface, Ryu addressed and summoned the system to get his reward. As soon as he accepted the reward, a Japanese-styled sword actualized mid-air in front of him. The sword sheathed in a black scabbard that had golden and silver patterns. Ryu grasped the scabbard with his left hand while his right hand gripped the hilt of the sword. He unsheathed it. The hilt of the sword is purple with golden linings. As for the blade, it's slightly curved and single-edged. It's a long sword with a blade length of around 120 centimeters, with unique patterns and dragon engravings. It's slightly heavy but Ryu found it perfect. Swing. The sword made an audible sound as he made a swing at the air. Akashachi Ryu read the letters inscribed at the bottom of the blade. Thunder. It's a nice name. From the system, he found this sword was made from rare metals and hardened with lightning strikes. It's even rarer than the Nikaran sword and can be used to slay the demons. At that moment, another ding sounded in his mind. With a thought, the system panel emerged before his eyes. Task, save Kane Koko from upper rank 2 demon, Doma. Details, Kane and Doma will meet and fight in 10 days near Hako village. Reward, primary lottery draw plus 2 demon points. Is the system joking, providing such a difficult task? With my current strength, I wouldn't know how I died facing the upper moon. Wait. The task is just to save Kane Koko from Doma. If it's just saving, it's possible. Ryu thought. Thinking, he then summoned the status panel. Name, Ryu. Race, Ordinary Human. Skill, Nature Breathing, Basic 4 tenths, Tech High, Intermediate 1 tenth. Demon Points, 0. With my Tech High at the Intermediate level, I can withstand and effectively nullify some damage incurred from the demons without getting injured. But, my breathing style is still basic. It's difficult to improve them in a short period. Only with demon points, they can be developed quickly. Ryu mused and closed the panel. From here, it would take around 10 days to reach the location mentioned by the system. I need to hurry. After packing his things, Ryu departed from the location where he stayed for over four months. The moon was shining high above, with the clouds parted. Near Hako village, a woman was traveling through the trees jumping from one to another. Her pace may seem leisurely but she's quick in her steps. She's none other than Flower Hashira Kane Koko. She received a report from her Kasugai Crow a demon was spotted at the Hako village. After hearing the news, she hurried over. By the time she reached, it was near morning. Kane walked inside the village, which had around 50 or so houses. The place was too quiet, devoid of any sound. The unnatural silence warned her senses of danger. The air is freezing cold. Unsheathing her Nikaran blade, she prepared herself for any surprise attack from a demon lurking nearby. She slid open the door of a nearby house. As she opened the door, what came into her view was the sight of a family slaughtered in cold blood, their plentiful blood staining the walls, ceiling, and especially the floor. But, there was no sight of a demon only corpses with their throat slit or crushed by force. Stealing her heart, Kane checked the other houses in concern. It was the same. One common thing she noticed was, the female corpses were missing. She furrowed her brow, confused. She knew it was no ordinary demon. She heard of a demon consuming females. An upper moon, it's going to be challenging. It was also at that moment, that Ryu reached the village after a long travel of ten days. Chapter 9, Upper Moon 2, Doma Following a blood trial, she came to the house at the entrance of the village while sending her Kasugai crow to report what's happened there. As Kane walked deep into the village, she encountered a tall, imposing man in the passageway. He exuded a menacing aura despite the ever-present smile on his face while his hands held folded up fans. Oh. a hey girl. You look young and tasty. His rainbow eyes glanced at the flower Hashira's form eagerly, without a single ounce of shame. 
His mouth was streaked with blood, he was standing beside a pile of women's corpses, most of them were dead. Looking at the corpses of young girls and women, Kane raged as her eyes turned cold. Gripping her katana, she looked at the demon. Hi there. Nice to meet you. My name is Doma. A nice night, hey. Doma cheerfully introduced himself. Help, me. Among the pile of corpses, a young girl sprang alive and begged Kane to help her as she started running forward. SHH. I'm talking, right? Saying this, Doma waved his fan at the young girl, but Kane was extremely quick on her steps and saved the young girl. But, blood spewed from the young girl's throat revealing a cut. You are fast but missed by a bit. You should be a Hashira. I am going to enjoy devouring you. Don't worry, you will be with me forever. You make me sick. Kane uttered and used her breathing technique, flower breathing, fourth form, crimson Hanagoromo. With a quick speed, she reached the demon and unleashed a powerful slash with all her strength. Her slash was quick, and graceful with twists and curves. Her target is the demon's head. She knew it was upper moon rank, two demon, but she wanted to take this chance and end the battle right here if it was possible. He took a step back without any seriousness, letting the sword cut his shoulder deep. It recovered in an instant. Oh my! You are so strong! Doma exclaimed while clapping his hands, but he froze up mid-clap and put a finger on his bottom lip, thinking of something. Girl, you are so rude. You haven't properly introduced yourself. He appeared angry. Without caring about his exaggerated expression and words, Kane charged and attacked again. This time, she used fifth form, peonies of futility. At the right distance, she unleashed a flurry of nine consecutive sword swings that flowed and weaved in on themselves. Doma avoided the strikes with ease, smiling and commenting, your attacks are pretty. Show me your other forms, he used his blood demon art, barren hanging garden. Kane barely fence off with her flower breathing, second form. Honorable Shadow Plum. Several rotating sword slashes deflected the ice shards. It's rude to not answer when asked. You know it's pointless, you can't defeat me. Why don't you give up? He showed a grinning smile while waving his fan. My name's Kane Koko. Flower Hashira. As a Hashira, it's my duty to slay the demons. If I give up, who will protect the innocents from demons like you? Kane's eyes showed the determination to die. He pouted well if you say so can a chan I'm going to enjoy absorbing your body when we're done with this pointless fight. Kane knows she may die today because no Hashira has ever defeated the upper moon for centuries. She wasn't that arrogant to think she could slay one. If possible, she wants to delay until sunrise. She wasn't afraid of death but at the same time, she didn't want to leave her sister alone in the world. Doma who was passive till now, took action. At a speed too quick for the eye to process, he charged at Kane while waving his fan. Kane jumped back, dodging Doma's attack. In midair, she spun around and delivered a series of powerful slashes using her body weight. Freezing clouds Doma waved his fan, creating a large wave of cold wind. With another wave of his fan, he scattered the cold wind around. The wind was cold enough to freeze the surroundings. As the technique had a long reach, it affected Kane by freezing her sword and some parts of her hair. If she hadn't reacted quickly, she would have turned into an icicle by now. He's strong. Just now she discovered, that her breathing was getting disorderly. It's the cold. I shouldn't breathe in too much, otherwise, it will prove fatal. Just as Kane and Doma were fighting, Ryu who arrived shortly after Kane watched the battle from a distance by masking his presence and body. She's good, better than Shinobu of the future. Not reckless. Her breathing forms are perfect and she's intelligent enough to stall for time. Ryu mused. But against Doma, she has no chance. He's simply playing with his prey so that he can enjoy better. Ryu played countless battle strategies in his mind. Kane survives till now because she's a girl. If he intervenes it's a different matter. The upper moon will try to eliminate him at the fastest time possible for interrupting his play. There's still time for her sunrise. Since she survived in the original work, it's not a problem. Ryu lay in wait for the right opportunity and time. Fifteen minutes passed. With top-notch evasive maneuvers and quick steps, Kane managed to avoid Doma's attacks and inflicted deep wounds on him. But, everything is for naught. As an upper moon demon, his recovery ability is on another level. He recovered from all the attacks at finger-snapping speed. 
On the other hand, Doma was slowly getting frustrated by Kane's evading strategy. He wants her complete body, it's the reason why he hadn't used his entire strength. But, he's losing his patience as his attacks slowly grew deadlier while his blood demon art increased in power. Evading Kane's powerful slash, scattering lotuses, Doma swung his fan creating a blizzard of long-ranged razor-sharp ice shards shaped like lotus petals. Blood splashed. Kane failed to completely block his attacks. Her shoulder and leg were injured while blood flowed from her wounds drenching her Hayori. She started panting with exhaustion as the cold affected her breathing. It prevented her from exploding with a hundred percent of her strength. Kane narrowed her eyes while she maintained the total concentrating breathing, constant with difficulty. Maybe this is it for me, one last time, I should at least bring this demon with me to hell. Putting every ounce of her strength into the attack, Kane performed her flower breathing, first form, withering rose. Chapter 10, Ryu vs Doma As Kane exhaled, white mist slipped from her nose due to cold. Suddenly, her form disappeared. In lightning speed, she reached Doma and executed her slash. It all happened in an instant, in the blink of an eye. But, as her Nikaran sword decapitated Upper Moon too, Kane sensed something was wrong. Her instincts screamed at her to leap back. There's no time to react. Time slowed down in her eyes as she noticed the form that she slashed was a fake body made of ice. The next moment, Doma's fake body turned into an ice shell and protruded spikes all over its body. One of the spikes went for heart but she could nothing to evade. Though she knows what's happening thanks to the focusing technique, her body can't react to it. For a moment there, she saw death. At that moment, Kane suddenly felt someone grabbing her Hayori and the next moment, a strong force yanked her back. Ice spikes missed the targets as she escaped unharmed and landed on her feet, sliding a little. Her heart thumped loudly, escaping death at hair's breadth. After a second, she reacted and glanced back to see a young man around her age. She let out a sigh of relief, glimpsing he was a human. But then, she once again focused her attention on the upper moon demon. Sitting on the rooftop of a house, Doma smiled at Kane fanning his fan. When did he create a clone? I didn't even notice it. Kane thought as she gripped her sword. Only then did she notice her hands were sweaty and trembling. It's not good. She exhausted her strength and couldn't use her breathing technique because of the cold. I have to warn him not to breathe the air as it's contaminated with cold. At that moment, Doma also switched his attention to Ryu and grinned, My, my. Another one came. Are you also a demon slayer? The night's getting better. After saving Kane Koko from the life-threatening injury, Ryu calculated the time. The sun will rise in three to five minutes. I can do it. Unsheathing the sword Akashachi from his back, Ryu stood tall, eyes fierce and radiating power. His instincts were at their peak, ready to be unleashed. He won't underestimate the upper moon demon, Doma. With the force to his feet, the ground cracked as he bolted towards Doma. Getting to him. Natural breathing, fifth form, lightning storm Ryu shouted as slashed his blade. Unlike he played with Kane, Doma used his gold-plated Japanese war fan to parry his slash. Weapons collided in mid-air, creating sparks of blue arcs. Doma exclaimed. Oh my, you have some strength. And, your sword looks threatening, where did you buy it? Speaking, he waved the fan in his other hand. Ryu saw a fan come at him, it was swift and merciless. Knowing he won't be able to evade it, he silently muttered, Tekai. Something heavy smashed his chest and sent him flying back, the way he came from. The strike froze his chest region. Before his body could crash into the ground, he was hugged by Kane. Ryu felt two soft orbs reducing his impact. He didn't expect Kane to hide such huge ones by sporting loose-fitting clothes. Are you okay? Kane asked in a concerned tone. She saw him take a direct hit. At such a close range, she knew it would be fatal. No. I am okay. It's completely worth it. Rubbing the chest area, Ryu commented. Cheekily, he rested his weight on Kane, feeling the softness again. Worth it, what is he talking about? Kane wondered for a second, before feeling the sensation on her breast. You? Rogue. Kane's complexion changed as she carelessly pushed him to the side, no longer caring about his injury. Ah. Uh. Ryu groaned in pain while a drop of blood leaked from the corner of his mouth. Though he activated his Tekai, it reduced the strike force by 50 to 60% as it's only at the intermediate level. On the other hand, 
Kane was furious. He didn't expect the young man to be a pervert. What kind of person is he? Flirting with me while fighting the upper moon too. Doma narrowed his eyes, watching the play before him. His grin long disappeared, you are a gutsy one. Snatching my prey, ruining my snack time. For a second, Ryu and Kane felt cold chills upon the spine while a chilly breeze covered the entire area. But, the next second everything disappeared as if what they felt was nothing but an illusion. Ryu knew he completely angered the upper moon demon. He cursed his perverted mind and lousy mouth. It's his first time behaving like this with a girl, don't know how it happened and when his personality altered. Forgetting about these useless things, Ryu stood up and looked at the demon Doma. Hey Doma, before we fight, let me ask you a question. I know you like to devour only girls but what kind do you really like? I mean young, middle-aged, old, plump, slender, or something along the line. Suddenly, Doma's figure disappears and appears behind Ryu. One of his fans aimed at his head, ready to blow it. Though Ryu failed to react to Doma's speed, he instinctively reacted and fired a back kick. Swish. Doma's body took a step back under the impact while his fan missed Ryu's head by a centimeter. Using the kick as a springboard, Ryu hopped back and kept his distance from the demon. Fighting the upper moon demon at close range with his current strength is nothing but suicidal. Without feeling Ryu's blow, Doma rushed at him, winding his fans that formed a blizzard of long-ranged razor-sharp ice shards shaped like lotus petals. Scattering lotuses. Facing Doma's attack, Ryu's breathing shifted to a natural state while his hand tightened the grip around the sword hilt. Nature breathing, second form, current of the ocean. Ryu swung his sword in a circular motion. Suddenly, a huge amount of water formed around him before billowing outward in the form of a monstrous wave reaching 1-0 m in height. The wave was fast and destructive, carrying powerful currents. Upon contact with Doma's ice shards, they tore it apart as if it were nothing. Chapter 11, Ryu vs Doma, 2 Warm orange hues dyed the distant horizon, pushing the dark sky aside. The sun is going to rise. The ground cracked as Ryu kicked the ground with force, he dashed forward at extreme speed while slashing his sword multiple times in diverse styles. First form, wind slash his blade spawned pressurized wind slashes, blitzing Doma. Doma nonchalantly fended off the slashes with the pair of war fans while some wind blades made cut marks on his body, but they soon disappeared, a quirk of being a demon. Oh, that was so much fun. Doma said with a friendly smile on his face. Waving the fan before his face, he spoke. You mastered a weird breathing method, one that I haven't seen before. I will remember you both. Especially you, pointing at Kane, don't get killed by my other demon friends, you are mine. After saying the words, Doma withdrew at a quick pace. Exiting the small village, his figure disappeared into the woods surrounded by trees. Within a few seconds after his disappearance, the sun began to illuminate the world. Ryu's entire body relaxed as he plopped to the ground gasping for air. To tell the truth, he's just putting on a strong front. The skill Tekai and strong body protected him from fatal injury. Holding the breath during battle and performing the breathing method, at the same time, is too difficult. It's completely different from when he did underwater. If Doma had a few more minutes to spare, he wouldn't survive as the latter hadn't fully exerted his strength. The luck was on his side today. At that moment, the system notification sounded in his mind. Task. Save Kane Koko from upper rank 2 demon, Doma. Reward, primary lottery draw plus 2 demon points. Before he could check, Kane's voice sounded. Who are you, really? Ryu felt Kane looking him up and down. When he looked up, he was stunned. Because Kane stood a meter away from him covering her breast region with one of her hands, while her other hand pointed the sword at him. Looking at her guarded expression, Ryu clearly felt a cracking sound in his heart. It's true I said something inappropriate but don't look at me like a thief who's ready to pick the flowers. You don't have to thank me but please don't insult me. Understanding she won't change her opinion of him, Ryu didn't try to reason with her. With unsteady steps, he walked away. After walking a few steps, he thought in his heart. Why isn't she stopping me? Isn't she supposed to stop me, doesn't she feel any pity? After taking another two steps, Ryu stopped and looked back just to see a slight smile at the corner of Kane's lips as if she foresaw all his moves. Fuck. What a cunning woman. I underestimated her. She's completely different from the gentle image shown in the manga. You win, woman. Cough, 
you are Flower Hashira, Kane Koko, right? Isn't your butterfly mansion responsible for taking care of injured people? Ryu asked, pretending to grimace in pain. Now, now, you are good at acting. Are you the masked man who took care of a demon some months ago? Kane asked. She let down her guard, at least for now. Yes. As a flower Hashira, I formally invite you to join the Demon Slayer Corps. Kane conveyed in a serious tone. I can't decline such a beautiful girl's invitation. I accept, so that I can stay by your side. Ryu cheekily responded, while looking at her intently. Don't take it for granted. It's just an invitation, you will only be accepted after passing the final selection. Kane said, glaring at him. She couldn't keep the image of Hashira before him for long. His cheekiness and pervertness completely infuriate her. She couldn't wait to punch him in the face. But his strength is good. If guided properly, he may become a powerful demon slayer. At that moment, a sound traveled from a distance. Sister, sister. Soon, the figure of Shinobu appeared before them. After seeing Kane, she let out a sigh of relief. Sister, are you okay? I heard from my Kasugai crow that you met an upper moon demon. I am okay seeing Shinobu, a gentle smile appeared on Kane's face. Shinobu looked much younger than Kane, wearing a plain white Hayori over the standard Demon Slayer uniform. Hello, are you Kane's sister? Nice to meet you. Ryu showed a sunny smile and with a slight bow, he introduced himself, showing his gentlemanly character. Wariness appeared on Shinobu's face as she shielded her sister and asked, Sister, who is he? Thanks to him, your sister is still alive. He fought Upper Moon for a few minutes before Sunrise forced the demon to retreat. Oh. Shinobu's opinion of Ryu changed as she looked at him curiously. A flurry of footsteps sounded and soon, a bunch of people arrived. They wore different Demon Slayer uniforms with their identity concealed by dark head coverings with white linings, and a paper-like mask. Ryu knows them. They are Kakushi, a division of people who works as attendants to the Demon Slayer Corps. They support the Demon Slayers, including first aid, cleaning up the battlefield, transporting people, etc. As soon as they arrived, they started cleaning the mess done by the Upper Moon Demon. Hey, what's your name? Are you a Demon Slayer, why haven't I seen you before? Shinobu asked. My name's Ryu. I'm not a Demon Slayer yet but I will be soon. Ryu responded calmly. What? If you aren't a Demon Slayer, then how did you fight the Upper Moon? Sister, what's going on? Shinobu's completely confused. For a second, she even thought her sister was lying. How could someone who's not even a demon slayer fight an upper moon demon? Even if it's for a minute, it's unbelievable. Similar to Shinobu, Kane is curious about Ryu's strength, breathing style, and the sword that can injure the demon. I also want to ask you about this, but this is not the time and place to discuss. Let's get you treated first, we will discuss it when we reach our residence. After cleaning the village, Kane, Shinobu, and Ryu traveled towards the Butterfly Mansion. Creator's Thoughts Sorry for the delay in updates, everyone. The One Piece novel is in its end just two more chapters to go, and I plan to finish them this week. After that, I'll be focusing entirely on this novel. Starting Monday, updates will be regular. Chapter 12, Task Reward, Sharingan At the Butterfly Mansion on the outskirts of a small town. The sky was a constant blue, with not a cloud in sight, and the summer heat was beginning to set in. After a day of travel, Ryu, guided by a Kakushi, finally arrived at the Butterfly Mansion. Kane and Shinobu left midway, summoned by a Kasugai crow. They didn't share the reason, and he didn't ask. If his guess was right, they were heading to meet Yubayashiki. Once he arrived at the mansion, the young girl Aoi Kanzaki helped him tend to his small wounds. I heard you saved Kane-san. You have my thanks. She's the pillar of the Butterfly Mansion. If something happens to her, we wouldn't be able to take it. You're mostly unscathed, so you just need some rest. Take this pain relief medicine after you've eaten something. With that, Aoi hurried out of the room to attend to the wounded demon slayers brought in by other Kakushi. The Butterfly Mansion was still relatively quiet, and no one came to disturb him. Dressed in the white hospital clothes provided by the young butterfly girls, Ryu lay in his bed, ready to summon the system. Name, Ryu. Race, Ordinary Human. Skill, Nature Breathing, Basic Five Tenths, 
Tekai, Intermediate 1 tenth. Demon Points, 2. Ryu opened the status panel and saw that his demon points had increased by 2. He wasn't in a hurry to allocate his points. He also noticed that his nature breathing had risen by 1 point after his battle with Doma. It seemed that pushing his body to its limits or facing extreme situations help increase the proficiency of his breathing style. He then opened the lucky draw he had earned after completing the mission. 1 Moon Breathing Style 2 No Reward 3 Sharing Gone 4 No Reward 5 Soru 6 No Reward 7 Selfless State 8 Transparent World The rewards were even worse than the last time. The top rewards like Sun Breathing Style and Observation Haki had disappeared replaced by Moon Breathing and Selfless State. In place of Tekai, he now saw Sharingan. Knowing it was useless to complain to the system, Ryu silently gave his command. System, spin the lottery. Ryu thought. The lucky wheel began to rotate for a few seconds and then stopped at number 3, just like last time, earning him the reward, Sharingan. Better than no reward. Ryu consoled himself as he read the description provided by the system. Sharingan, 3 Tomo, fixed, not upgradable. A magical jutsu from the Naruto world. Accepting the Sharingan, the perception will be enhanced to an exceptional level, you will gain the ability to predict the opponent's movements and read the flow of breath. Note, the use of Sharingan consumes physical strength. It can't be upgraded to Mangekyo Sharingan. Ryu quickly realized the reason he got the Sharingan itself not the bloodline of Uchiha. The system tricked me. But at least I don't have to use demon points to upgrade it from the basic level, he thought. Do you want to equip Sharingan? The system's mechanical voice sounded in his mind. No. I'll do it tomorrow. Ryu decided not to equip the Sharingan just yet, knowing his current state wasn't at its prime. When you want to do it, just think equip Sharingan. The system will complete the installation. Good. Throwing aside the unwanted thoughts, Ryu decided to get some rest to heal the injured body and start practicing from tomorrow. He can't waste time in bed, resting. Meanwhile at the Yubayashiki Manor. The wind blew off tunes in the manor, dancing the cherry blossoms wafting to its tune. The air of nature fills the surroundings, just a slight inhale is enough to make one relax despite all the tension. That's how Kane feels right now. Relaxed. The door of the manor opened revealing Kagaya Yubayashiki, dressed in white Hayori with pink and purple wave designs at the bottom. Seeing his arrival, Oyakata-sama, Kane Koko went down to one knee showing her respect, but the man dismissed it, causing her to stand on her feet. Your breath seems weak, Kane. Kagaya spoke in a gentle, soothing tone that would make anyone feel light and serene. Though she had changed her clothes and bandaged her wounds, Yubayashiki sensed her condition through his extraordinary perception. Yes. Oyakata-sama. I encountered the upper moon 2 demon, Doma. He's incredibly strong. My body will recover in a day or two, Kane recounted her battle with Doma, detailing how Ryu had saved her without leaving anything out. Fortunately, nothing happened to you, Kaguya spoke in a warm tone. I foresaw your battle with a powerful demon and your death. It's by fate that you are still alive. Kane remained silent. How could she not know that? If it hadn't been for Ryu, she would have been a corpse by the time Shinobu arrived. Since he could stall an upper moon for some time, he must be strong and skilled. What do you think of his strength? He's strong, Oyakata-sama. He's mastered a unique breathing method that I've never seen or heard of before. He calls it nature breathing. It integrates wind, water, and lightning styles. If I'm not mistaken, there might be even more to it, Kane replied. Good. Guide him well. My intuition tells me he will be of great help in eradicating the demons in the future. Yes, Oyakata-sama, Kane responded, but she was shocked in her heart as she knew the extraordinary ability to foresee possessed by the Yubayashiki family. Be safe, my child. We will meet in the next semi-annual Hashiram meeting. At that time, you can share your insights with other Hashiras about the upper moon you fought. Yes, Oyakata-sama. Please take care of your health, Kane said her farewell and took her leave. Early morning. Ryu made his way to the back of the butterfly manor, grabbing a wooden training sword he saw along the way. Sliding open the door, he entered the small training field. The morning air was refreshing and cool, and the gentle breeze soothed his spirit. To his surprise, he saw a thin girl, around seven or eight years old, swinging a wooden sword. 
if he wasn't mistaken, she was Kaneo Tsuyuri, the adopted sister of Shinobu and Kane Koko. Noticing his presence, Kaneo glanced at him briefly before returning to her training. Ryu didn't mind, understanding the girl's circumstances. He could only sympathize with the life she had experienced during her childhood. Without disturbing her, he began practicing his breathing style. Chapter 13, Training in Butterfly Mansion After performing his breathing style from the first to the ninth form, Ryu felt the natural energy gathering around and pouring into his body, following his breathing pattern. The natural energy healed injuries while his physique continued to strengthen itself. After repeating the process for 15 minutes, Ryu stopped. It's not that he didn't want to continue, with his current physical strength, it's the limit. Taking a short 10-minute break, he started practicing the skill Tekai. Since Tekai is based on one's physical strength, the stronger his physique, the more powerful the Tekai will be. At his current level, he can't move while performing Tekai, but once he advances to the next level, he'll be able to use the skill while moving around. It's getting harder to improve proficiency now that the skill has reached the intermediate level. I need more demon points, Ryu thought. At that moment, the thin door connecting the back made a smooth sliding sound being pushed open by someone. Kane and Shinobu emerged from the door while Aoi followed them with a tray in hand. Aira, Aira, you are here. I thought you already left. Looks like your injury is healed completely. Kane smiled a little. No way. With such a beautiful girl like you in the manor, I'm not leaving even if you throw me out. Ryu declared, waving his hand dismissively. Sister, he's hitting on you. Now I know why he saved you from that upper moon demon he loves you deeply. Shinobu whispered teasingly into her sister's ear, with a mischievous grin. My, my, Shinobu, when did you become such a gossipy girl? Don't you have other things to do? Kane smiled softly, though Shinobu sensed a different tone beneath it. Nei-chan, Kaneo is alone. Let me go and take care of her, that girl won't eat anything without our instruction. Aoi, let's go. Shinobu hurried off leaving her sister and Ryu alone. As she passed him, she didn't forget to greet him. Good morning, Ryu-san. Good morning, Shinobu, Ryu replied before turning his attention back to Kane. Your sister is a lovely girl. Unlike Shinobu's future self, who lost her sister, her current self is blunt, brash, and outspoken. Such carefreeness gives one a pleasant feeling, it's hard not to like such a lovely girl. She is. I love her innocent smile very much. Kane's voice softened. It's for that reason I'm hunting the demons, I want her to be happy without any demons disrupting her smile. I don't know what that girl would do if something happened to me. Thanks to you I cheated death two days back, but I know I won't be that lucky every time. I will be there to protect you every time. Ryu responded seriously. The words came straight from his heart without a second thought. Kane was momentarily stunned for a moment because she could tell Ryu serious with his words. Their eyes stared at each other in silence. Kane's pale purple eyes which were almost bug-like were beautiful to him. Her noticeable red lip that contrasted with her pale skin looked so soft and beautiful as well. She was absolutely stunning. Above everything, it was her gentleness and calm smile that truly made him fall head over heels for her. Snapping out of their gaze, Kane's easygoing demeanor returned as she remarked, You're a dangerous person? Ryu-san, with all those sweet talks. I'll have to be careful around you. Ryu scratched his head sheepishly, embarrassed. I don't think so. I'm a good person. Let's talk about the official business. I need details about you like your life, sword, breathing style, and reason for fighting the demons. Kane asked. Ryu told her who he is and his life experience before coming to the topic of breathing style. Regarding my breathing style and sword, I am sorry I can't reveal the details. It's a secret. Kane didn't mind but began to sympathize with his life experience as it was similar to hers. With your current strength, you're more than qualified to become a demon slayer. You can attend the final selection which is a selective process for individuals who seek to become a recognized demon slayer of the demon slayer core. When's the next final selection? Ryu asked, thinking to himself, what an easy way to earn demon points given that most of the demons captured and detained on Mount Fujikazan are relatively weak. In a month, Kane replied. Good. At that moment, Aoi arrived with a tray full of food. Kane-san, breakfast is ready. Let's eat before it gets cold. Everyone gathered around the wooden floor, with breakfast laid out at the center. 
The breakfast was simple, it consisted of steamed rice, miso soup, and grilled fish, accompanied by fresh hot tea. Thank you, Aoi. Everyone thanked Aoi before starting to eat. Kaneo, eat up. Only after Shinobu's instruction, did the girl stop gazing at the sky and begin to eat. Nei-chan, Kaneo is still like this with no hope of improvement, Shinobu complained worriedly as it was some time since they adopted Kaneo but the girl showed no sign of thinking on her own. My, my. Don't worry Shinobu, with our care she will recover step by step. Kane said soothingly, gently caressing Kaneo's hair. Looking at the warm atmosphere, Ryu began to miss his parents and sister back on earth. I wonder how they are doing without me. Ryu-san, if you are free, we can spar for a bit. Your breathing style is weird and powerful, maybe I can gain something from it. Kane asked. You know I won't reject your request. Ryu replied cheekily, not missing any opportunity to tease. Kane didn't show any expression on her face, but he could tell she was annoyed in a good way. With wooden training swords in hand, both of them moved to the training field and faced each other. Neither of them was quick to take the first move. As they stared at each other, a serious expression painted on Kane's face. Seeing him with a casual look, Kane took it upon herself and made the first move by lunging towards Ryu with a sword swing. The swing caused the wooden sword to whistle as it tore through the air, toward Ryu's head. Chapter 14, Nature Physique Strong Ryu quickly blocked the blow with the wooden sword and the force of it pushed him backward while his heels dug slightly into the ground. With a strong thrust forward, he threw Kane back where she started before dashing forward with a powerful sword swing. His physique strengthened with natural energy, showed an innate advantage while Kane's forced to use the total concentration breathing technique to parry the clash. What an envious physique. He's naturally strong. Kane thought. As she began to use her breathing technique, her strength enhanced to a superhuman level. Their clash produced a slight shockwave stirring up wind and dirt. Though it's just a wooden sword, Ryu know if he's careless he would take quite a heavy blow. Wow. What a power. Yeah. Nesan beat him up. Show him the strength of Hashira. Shinobu cheered from the sideline. He's strong. I thought he escaped from Upper Moon Demon because of luck. Aoi commented while Kaneo watched in silence. Kane drove her way through by performing all the standard flower breathing forms while Ryu showed the extraordinariness of the natural breathing forms. Tenth form, flower view. At some point, Kane's breathing suddenly changed she disappeared for a moment before appearing in front of Ryu, delivering a two-hand vertical slash. Bad. Ryu hurriedly resisted the attack with his wooden sword, but the power behind the blow shattered the wooden sword and came at his chest. Tekai. At the last moment, he hardened his muscles with Tekai. Bang! Kane's wooden sword smashed against his chest, forcing him to take a few steps back while coughing a mouthful of blood. Strong! Unlike Shinobu, Kane's innately strong. The strength of Hashira is no joke. I need to upgrade my natural breathing to the intermediate level to fight her on equal footing. Era, Era, I'm sorry. Are you okay, did I hurt you severely? Kane asked, but there wasn't a shred of care in her voice. You are ruthless? woman. I give you that. Ryu uttered, stroking his chest. He thought mentally, once my strength surpasses you, I will show you who I am. Ryu-san, are you okay? Shinobu came forward and asked. I'm fine, Shinobu. You are a kind soul, unlike your sister. Ryu taunted. My. My. I know you can block the strike. It's the same as the time with the upper moon. How did you do it? Kane asked, curious. Ryu know what she's asking, he responded. It's a skill called Tekai. By hardening the muscles, you can withstand and effectively nullify any damage. If practiced to a high level, one's muscles can reach the level of iron. Even against sword attacks, you block them with bare hands. What? Kane was shocked, upon hearing the explanation. She asked abruptly without thinking, can you teach me? But Kane soon came back to her senses, how can I ask him to teach such a precious skill? It should be some kind of secret skill passed down the family. Noticing Ryu's silence, Kane thought she was making it difficult for Ryu to decide. She quickly said. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. In truth, Ryu's communicating inside his mind, system, can I teach her? Can. I can teach you the skill, but you can't reveal it to others. 
it's not that I am being selfish once such skill spread to demons you can think of the consequence. Ryu expressed his thoughts. I understand. Kane nodded. I promise you, I won't tell the second soul without your permission. Shinobu, Aoi, Kaneo, you too. You shouldn't tell anyone about this. Okay, Nei-san. We will take our leave. Shinobu responded seriously and left with Aoi and Kaneo. No need to be so serious. Ryu waved his hand and began to teach her the principles of Tekai. Practice well. With your talent, you can reach the basic level in a short span. Thank you. With this, I can fight the demons more bravely. Kane showed a grateful look. Dash. Inside the small room allocated to Ryu. System, equip the Sharingan. Ryu thought in his mind. As soon as he said, a warm feeling flooded his eyes followed by a slight bearable pain. After a second, his eyesight became clear with more sharpness and clarity. The world looked vibrant. With a small face mirror, he looked at his eyes. The color of his iris turned red bearing three tomo connected by a circle. What a nice pair of eyes. Beautiful. Ryu thought. No wonder the Uchiha people turn handsome after awakening the Sharingan. Playing with the Sharingan for a bit, he closed them. Since I don't have chakra, Sharingan consumes physical power. With my current strength, I have to use them sparingly. System, show me the status panel. Name, Ryu. Race, Ordinary Human. Skill, Nature Breathing, Basic 5 tenths, Tekai, Intermediate 1 tenth, 3 Tomo Sharingan not upgradable. Demon Points, 2. Looking at the status panel for a moment, Ryu got the idea. System, can you add the level of my physique in the panel? Yes, Host. Name, Ryu. Physique, Nature Entry, 50%. Skill, Nature Breathing, Basic 5 tenths, Tekai, Intermediate 1 tenth, Sharingan not upgradable. Demon Points, 2. System, can you explain about the physique tab you added? Ryu asked, seeing the word nature and the percentage beside it. By practicing natural breathing and absorbing natural energy for a long period of time, you will awaken a nature physique. It's divided into entry, intermediate, advanced and supreme. At the entry level your physique will transform into a perfect state with an increase in the life force. At the intermediate level your strength will be enhanced to a superhuman level with an accelerated healing factor. At the advanced level your physique will attain the state one with nature. By reaching this level, you can enter the nature mode, akin to the sage mode in Naruto. As for the supreme level, your strength is too low to know about them. Can't I upgrade it with demon points? No. If I upgrade my nature breathing to perfection, will it advance my physique? Ryu asked again. No. But it can shorten the practice time to advance the physique. Chapter 15, Final Selection Days passed by, and nearly one month went by silently. Ryu stayed at Butterfly Mansion, doing nothing but training his sword skills and using natural energy to enhance his physique. The result? his physique increased by just 10%. He couldn't do anything about the slow progress as his breathing style was at the basic level. He even thought of going out to hunt the demons, but the flower Hashira Kane wouldn't allow it. Since he wasn't in any kind of rush, he trained honestly. Finally, the day has come for him to travel to Mount Fujikazan and attend the final selection. He had to leave today to reach the location by tomorrow. After finishing his morning practice, Ryu went into the butterfly manor to pack his things to prepare for the travel. As he entered the manor, he saw Aoi treating a demon slayer. Ryu didn't see them when he went out, meaning they were just admitted. Is he okay? Ryu asked, walking to her side. Just some minor injuries and broken bones. They will heal in a few days. Aoi replied with a sigh and opened her heart. You know, Ryu-san, I was supposed to be demon slayers like them since I passed the final selection by luck which was conducted a few months ago. But, after facing the demon I lost my courage to fight them. I was too afraid. I am a coward. What are you saying, Miss Aoi? I think what you are doing right now is more outstanding than fighting the demons. Saving demon slayer's life is more precious than slaying the demons. By doing so, you are saving many innocent people's lives indirectly. Ryu said his heartfelt words and showed a grin. I'm heading out for the final selection. I will be back in a few days, Miss Aoi. Saying this, Ryu walked to his room. Take care, Ryu-san. 
I hope for your safe return. Aoi whispered. Packing his things, Ryu came out of the room and saw Shinobu standing outside. Came back safe, Ryu-san. We will be waiting for your return. Shinobu said her good wishes. Don't worry. I will be back before you know it. Where's your sister? I haven't seen her for a day. Ryu asked. She's out. I don't know when she will be back. I will inform her about your departure once she comes back. Okay. Tell your sister not to miss me when I am gone. Haha. -ha. See you later. By the time Ryu reached the foot of the mountain, the night was dark with Half Moon hiding behind the clouds. As he climbed the stone steps to the gathering place for the final selection on top of the mountain, he marveled at the sheer amount of wisteria flowers. The luminous purple flower dangled down from the trees is a sight to behold. The gathering place is a stone walkway with a tall red wooden gate from which hung Buddhist prayer flags. There were already many young people arrived before him. With a glance, Ryu could tell there were at least thirty. He looked around to see if he could spot any familiar characters but there were none. Most of them were dressed in dark colors, with swords around their back or hip. All of them are trained by retired Hashira or from various training grounds of the Demon Slayer Corps. Seeing no one was speaking with one another, Ryu found a quiet spot and sat down. Waiting for someone from the Yubayashiki family to come and start the trial. Nearly thirty minutes passed before a white-haired woman in a kimono appeared from behind the red gate, followed by two children of Yubayashiki. Rising to his feet, Ryu looked in surprise as he knew them. It's Yubayashiki Amini and her children. At that moment, the system notification sounded in his mind. When he opened the system panel, he saw a new task. Task, complete final selection and defeat hand demon. Reward, two demon points. Two demon points. Such a low-level reward. Is there even a need to release such a task? Ryu cursed in his mind and brought his attention back. Good evening. Thank you for coming here tonight for the Demon Slayer's final selection. Yubayashiki Amina spoke in a gentle voice. There are several demons on Mount Fujikazan, captured by Demon Slayers and unable to leave. Because Wisteria which demons hate very much prevents them from leaving. They bloom year-round from the bottom to halfway up the mountain. However, from this point on, there's no Wisteria. Hence, demons roam free. You'll need to survive for seven days to pass the final selection. And now, be on your way. Amina bowed a little and made way for everyone to enter the trail. The candidates began to walk past the wisteria-protected area and into the demon-filled forest. Most of them had their swords already drawn, ready to face the unexpected. I don't know how many will survive by the end of seven days. Ryu too took off into the forest without an ounce of fear or hesitation. Ryu met his first demon within a few minutes of his dash into the forest. A standard pale male demon with slit eyes and saliva trickling from its mouth. It leaped at him from the air with a shout. With one look, he could tell the demon's hungry imprisoned without any food from its screaming and fanatic expression. Ryu sidestepped and the sword fluidly left the sheath drawing a beautiful sliver arc in the air. Shing! The demon's body hit the ground with its head detached and started to disintegrate almost immediately because of the power of his sword. Too easy! He thought. It's just a lowest level demon with slightly enhanced strength and speed. Plus one demon points the system updated his demon points. Good. Two more, I can upgrade my nature breathing to intermediate level. Sheathing his sword back, Ryu sprinted along the forest actively seeking the demons. In his eyes, the demons are nothing but points for his advancement. The final selection is a good opportunity to accumulate the demon points. He plans to make good use of it. Chapter 16 breathing skill level up. After a few minutes, Ryu met two demons, one with long hair and horns, and another with scythe-shaped arms. They posed no threat to him as he sliced their heads with a swing of his sword and ended their miserable fate. Plus two demon points after seeing the notification, Ryu summoned the status panel. Name, Ryu. Physique, Nature Entry, 60%. Skill, Nature Breathing, Basic 5 tenths, Tech High, Intermediate 2 tenths, Sharingan not upgradable. Demon points, 5. Finally. He added the 5 demon points to upgrade his nature breathing to the intermediate level. As he did that, his nature breathing skill changed to intermediate 0 50. A mysterious feeling rushed into his mind, forcing him into a daze. He was in a dreamlike state where he's been practicing the nature breathing style for countless years. At some point, 
a change happened as his skill and breathing pattern broke through some kind of shackle and advanced to the next level. After a moment, he came back to his senses. The relentless repetition was fresh in his mind as he pushed himself beyond his previous limitations, shattering the boundaries that once constrained him. He felt his body and mind in sync, advancing his combat prowess to unprecedented heights. What a wonderful feeling! As he breathed along the familiar breathing pattern, his entire body brimmed with strength while he felt as light as a feather. Without demon points, it would have taken years of practice to reach this stage. My current strength should be close to that of Hashira. With Tekai, even dealing with the lower moon demons wouldn't be a problem for me. Finally, I have some strength to protect myself against any danger. With a slight exhale, Ryu once again focused his attention on the status panel. I need 50 points to advance to the next level. It shouldn't be difficult but it takes time. Considering I'm still in the final selection, I should accumulate as much as I can. No time to waste. Time to hunt. After an hour, Ryu's sharp hearing caught the sound of fighting coming from far away. Without hesitation, he took off, flashing into the trees toward the source. Someone help me. He heard a sound after a few seconds of the dash. Arriving at the scene, Ryu saw a young demon slayer limping on the ground with his leg injured and bleeding. A little away from him is a demon, with grayish skin, and a toned yet rugged body wearing torn and tattered clothes. The demon had a sword impaled through its heart pinning it to a tree. It seems like the demon slayer put up a good fight before being injured by the demon. Save me, the demon slayer noticed Ryu and stretched his hand. The demon yanked the sword and threw it away. Ah! Do you know how many days since I last feasted on someone? This place is killing me. I am going kill you all. The demon roared and lunged at the fallen slayer. With the strength of his legs, Ryu dashed forward and delivered a powerful kick that flung the demon crashing into one of the trees. Are you okay? Ryu asked. I am injured. The demon slayer spoke and punched the ground in frustration, why am I so weak? Just a little bit, I would have killed the demon. The demon sprang up and came at Ryu with fury-filled eyes. A swing at lightning fast decapitated the demon and turned it into ashes. Plus one demon point. So fast. The demon slayer came back to his senses as the demon attacked. He looked at Ryu and spoke through his gritted teeth. Don't leave any demons alive. Unlike me, you are strong. Yet. Ryu could tell the other party is impacted by demons in some way. Most of the demon slayers are. Picking up the Nikaran sword from the ground, he tossed it to the owner and said, you can stay beside me for the night. Once the sun is up, you can leave. Come back stronger for the next trial. Don't waste your time on me. I will be a burden with my injured leg. My blood will attract the demons. He has a good heart. Ryu thought and grinned, it would be nice if your blood attracted the demons, I wouldn't have to search for them. What? He's crazy. The demon slayer thought. Just like the man said, his blood attracted three more demons towards them but they were easily solved by Ryu. Once dawn came up, the young demon slayer limped toward the exit. With the sun high up in the sky, the demons hid underground or retreated to a sunless area. Using the time, Ryu found a good spot to take some rest. After resting for six hours, he woke up and began to practice. With his breathing style advanced to the next level, he can speed up the progress of advancing his physique. After a few hours of practice, his physique grew by 3%. With such a rate of improvement, I can advance my physique to the next level within a few days. Soon, the sky turned dark with all the stars twinkling beside the silver half-moon. Ryu started another night of hunting. With his formidable strength, he overpowered the demons with a single strike. Just like that six days passed, but he failed to find the hand demon. Today's the last day of the final selection. In the six days, he beheaded countless demons bringing his kill points to 20. As time passed, the number of demons he encountered diminished sharply. For instance, yesterday, he encountered only one demon. Did the demons shut themselves after finding the decrease in the numbers of the same kind? Ryu strolled around the forest, looking for the trace of demons. He scoured thoroughly with enhanced vision by opening Sharingan. Suddenly, he noticed a Nikaran sword in the distance while some tinges of blood painted the trees. Following the trace, he found an area that was ravaged by something huge. There were broken swords and some parts of bodies. He soon discovered a living human leaning against a tree with blood all over his body. Is it the hand demon? Ryu thought and approached the demon slayer whose face plastered with fear and blood. 
What happened? The demon's still out there. The demon slayer rasped, his words were out of breath. Ryu noticed he was shaking in fear. What did the demon look like? He's huge with countless hands wrapped around. The demon slayer shivered and sobbed, it chased after my friend. It's the hand demon. Ryu's eyes narrowed. And before he could go look for him, his feet felt a rumbling sound in the ground as if something heavy moving towards him. Chapter 17, Hand Demon Ryu stood in place, waiting for the hand demon to come. The vibration intensified as the demon approached his location. You, what are you doing? Let's get out of here. You won't stand a chance against that thing. The injured demon slayer urged. Seeing no response from Ryu, his eyes lost color as he paled. We are dead. And from the shadows of the forest, came the monstrous form of the hand demon. It was a grotesque creature with immense size and wrapped in countless hands. Every movement of the creature shook the very ground beneath them. It exuded an aura of malevolence that would send a shiver down anyone's spine. Facing such a creature, Ryu was unfazed by its aura or size. He thought, here comes my 2 plus 2 point. The hand demon's small head peeked out from amidst its many arms and looked at Ryu in amusement. When it noticed Ryu had no fox mask, it yelled losing its cool. You're not a fox cub too. Why I haven't met any of you Rokadaka's brats this time. Damn him. It's okay. I will have them next time. The hand demon turned its demonic eye onto him. You look tasty. Once I eat you, I will go for the others. The hand demon laughed. Ryu scowled at the hand demon with disgust, Tisk. You're one ugly bastard, the mere sight of you sickens me. What did you say, you brat? The hand demon's roar reverberated through the forest as its countless arms surged forward, aiming to crush Ryu into a pulp. Nature breathing, fifth form, lightning storm Ryu inhaled as his entire body crackled in lightning arcs. With swift speed, he sliced through the multitude of hands shot by the demon and raced forward. Before the demon could comprehend what was happening, countless hands twining around its body were slashed to ashes. With his sword sparking in purple arcs, Ryu stood above the head of the hand demon. What just happened, I couldn't even react. The hand demon tried to regenerate its severed hands, but it failed. With a tinge of disbelief and panic, he screamed. Why is my hands not regenerating? My sword's different from the Nikaran sword that you usually deal with, Ryu stated calmly, his three Tomo Sharingan locked onto the hand demon's eyes with the intent to kill, panicking it to the core. He's going to kill me. He isn't an ordinary demon slayer who came for the trial. Why did someone like him come here for the final selection? I'm not going down today. With him so close, I still have a chance. The hand demon launched a desperate attack, shooting a hand out from its maw at a swift speed. You're nothing but a demon with special abilities. Don't overestimate yourself. Ryu leaped away and swung his sword, the blade sliced through the air in a half-moon-shaped arc. His strike severed the demon's head along with its extending arm. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Is this how I am going to die? The hand demon watched his own body crumbling to ashes. Plus two demon points. You the injured demon slayer's voice trailed off with shock and disbelief. Oh yes. Ryu forgot about the injured demon slayer as his attention was focused on the hand demon. Let me drop you near the entrance. You need immediate treatment. Thanks. With the injured demon slayer over his shoulder, Ryu made his way to the entrance of the final selection where they started. As soon as he reached there, the injured demon slayer was picked by a member of Kakushi for immediate treatment. Back to the forest, Ryu looked for the demons, but he had no luck. For the rest of the night, he didn't encounter any demons. Fortunate for them, unfortunate for him. After a few hours, the sky began to lighten on the horizon, and in a few minutes, the sun's golden glow filled the entire area. When he walked past the wisteria region and reached the stone walkway where everyone stood seven nights ago, he saw another candidate like him. A few minutes passed by before, yet another candidate emerged. Only the three have passed this time. Ryu thought. Welcome back. Yubayashiki Amina spoke in a gentle tone as she stood before a table covered by a purple cloth. Congratulations on safely passing the trial. Thank you for coming out safe. She continued, First, we shall issue you all Demon Slayer uniforms. We will take your measurements, and then your ranks will be engraved on the back of your hand. There are ten ranks in total, you will start at the lowest rank, Mizunoto. As you slay more demons, 
your ranks will rise up. Next, you can choose an ore for your Nicaran sword. However, the swords will take some time to complete. Before that, Amina clapped her hands as the distinctive sounds of crows echoed around before three crows descended from the sky and landed on their shoulders. I have assigned Kasugai crows to each of you. These Kasugai crows are primarily used for communication. Ryu's Kasugai crow seems to be a gentle one, unlike some with tempers. As he reached out to caress the crow's head, it allowed him to do so, even going so far as to rub its head affectionately against the palm of his hand. Amina then pulled the purple cloth off the table, revealing a tabletop adorned with ten rough, chunky rocks, each in varying sizes. Now, please select an ore to use for your sword. Yubayashiki Amini allowed them to have a pick. Though he already possessed a sword, having another one as a spare is a good idea. Walking forward, he picked one randomly and made way for the other two to choose. Once the Nikaran sword is delivered to you, the Kasugai Crow will issue the tasks according to your rank. Have a safe travel. Yubayashiki Amina bowed slightly and said her farewell. The final selection has officially ended. Chapter 18, Advance in Strength As the final selection came to its conclusion, the system sent a notification to Ryu, notifying him that his task was successfully completed. Task, Complete Final Selection and Defeat Hand Demon Status, Complete Reward, 2 Demon Points Ryu took a moment to review the number of demon points he has now as he descended the mountains. Having killed nearly 20 demons during the trial, and adding the hand demon level he killed at the end, his points increased to 22. With the additional 2 points he gained as a reward for completing the task, he had 24 demon points in his possession. Name, Ryu. Physique, Nature Entry, 81%. Skill, Nature Breathing, Intermediate 0-50, Tech High. Intermediate 2 tenths, Sharingan not upgradable. Demon points, 24. It's good to have so many points. Now, how am I going to put them to good use? He thought and set his sights on Tekai. Anyway, I can't upgrade nature breathing to the advanced level within a short time, but Tekai can be enhanced to the next level. As Ryu added 8 points to his Tekai skill, it advanced to the next level, Tekai, advanced 0 25. As his Tekai advanced, he didn't feel a surge in strength, but he felt a significant rise in control over his skill. It's no longer limited to static defense, he can now move while performing Tekai. Tekai. With a thought, his entire body hardened to the level of iron. He directed a punch at the nearby tree just to see his blow shatter the tree trunk without injuring his fist. He can now fight demons barehand without worrying about injuring himself. He can deflect powerful blows and resist even sword slashes with ease. Ryu added the remaining points to nature breathing, intermediate 16 fiftieths. Let's set a small target and improve my physique to the intermediate level before the Nikaran sword gets delivered. With a relaxed pace, Ryu strolled towards the butterfly mansion, enjoying the scenery along the way. When he reached, he was welcomed by Kane, Shinobu, Aoi, and the other butterfly girls. Everyone's happy that he came back alive. Their smiles and kind gestures made his heart warm filling him with a sense of belonging to this place. Shinobu said, Welcome back, Ryu-san. We're all relieved to see you safe and sound. How was the final selection? Did you encounter any strong demons? Thinking for a moment, Ryu replied. I won't say strong. But there's one particular demon with a special ability, it could generate countless hands out of its body. Of course, I beheaded it with ease. Aside from Kane, everyone's eyes widened with interest. Countless hands? That sounds strong. Shinobu asked her sister, Nesan, how did something like that get into final selection? Kane smiled softly. It probably mutated after consuming the candidates and fellow demons. Looking at Kane's graceful figure, Ryu asked. So, Miss Kane, are you relieved to see me without any injury? Did you miss me while I am gone? No. Considering your strength, I know the final selection doesn't pose any threat to you. Kane replied, with no change in her smile. As for his other question, she ignored it, having grown accustomed to Ryu's sweet words and gestures. Please take some rest, as you had a long journey and just completed the trial. Saying this, she left with Shinobu. Watching her departing figure, Ryu couldn't help but smile softly to himself. Despite being ignored once again, he believes his antics and affection will melt her heart over time. With nothing to do, 
Ryu stayed at Butterfly Mansion waiting for the delivery of his Demon Slayer uniform and Nikarin blade. Only after that, can he embark on slaying the demons. For the next few days, Ryu didn't do much aside from practicing his nature breathing. Finally, he had a breakthrough today. His nature physique advanced to an intermediate level, surging his strength and life force to another level. It was an electrifying sensation, feeling his entire body transform. His muscles grew strong but not big, his bones got strengthened while his blood coursed through his body with enriched vitality. Ryu's entire being pulsated with power, he felt as if he could punch through a wall with ease. What a wonderful feeling! Despite the changes that happened within him, his appearance remained unchanged. But someone with sharp eyes and keen perception would find Ryu radiating with power. Just as he was probing his newfound strength, a knock at the door got him back to his senses. Knock. Knock. When he opened the door, he saw Kane standing outside. He's seeing her after a week since she's busy as a Hashira. So, Ryu greeted her with a smile, what brought the beautiful girl to my door? Want to come in? Kane ignored his words as her senses perceived something different about him today. She remarked, you look different today. His eyes radiated with strength and confidence, making her believe Ryu's strength underwent a change. Only someone with that transition would exude such an aura. Ryu brushed it off with a smile and teased with a playful expression. I think it's just the effect of your presence, Kane. Kane rolled her eyes, she explained the reason for the visit. I came to inform you that your Demon Slayer uniform has been delivered, just check whether it fits you. As for your Nikaran sword, it will arrive in a few days. I think. As a Hashira, you came to inform me of such a simple thing. You're such a cute girl, Kane. Ryu mused inwardly. Of course, he didn't dare say it to her or aloud. Kane's good at masking her feelings. It's not to the extent of saying love, but he could tell there's a touch of fondness or likeness in her actions. At least, there's some progress. Being a demon slayer, there's a chance they will lose their lives any time. Along with the looming threat of Kibutsuji Muzan and his demons, there's no way Kane, being a Hashira, will express her love or feelings. It's understandable. Chapter 19 First Mission A week passed by before someone arrived at Butterfly Manor, looking for him. When Ryu came out, he noticed a human figure with a bundle tied across his back, wearing a dark pink mask reminiscent of someone attempting to whistle. I'm Ryu. Ryu greeted. The mask is creepy. It gives me weird vibes. I'm Kozo Kanamori. Kanamori introduced himself. I am the one who forged your Nikaran sword. Hello. Can I see it? Ryu asked. Yes, Kanamori carefully unwrapped the bundle to reveal a standard Nikaran sword, housed within a matching scabbard. He gave it to Ryu. Accepting the sword with both hands, he held it horizontally, gripping the hilt firmly with one hand and the scabbard with the other. He carefully drew the sword from its sheath, and the blade emerged gleaming a little. The blade looked around 80 centimeters in length with a gentle curvature and long grip. The edge of the blade is razor sharp, capable of slicing through most materials with ease. Nikaran swords are referred to as color-changing katanas, as they take on a distinct color when first drawn by their owner. Please grab it with both hands. Kanamori said. As soon as he firmly grasped the hilt with both hands, a vibrant emerald green hue began to stem along the edge of the blade, casting a mesmerizing glow. It really changed colors. Ryu exclaimed, marveling at the exquisite craftsmanship. It's beautiful. It's my first time seeing such an emerald glow in the sword. Kanamori remarked in a satisfied tone. It's a nice sword. I will be happy if they prove useful in the battle. Then, I will take my leave. Kanamori said his farewell before setting off. As Ryu watched Kanamori leave the butterfly manor, a cawing sound echoed through the air, and his missing Kasugai crow swooped down from the sky, bringing his first mission. Ka. Ka. Ryu, here are your orders for the first task. Head south. Head south to a small town located near a lake. Children are missing there. His Kasugai crow announced his first task. It's time to hunt the demons, Ryu thought sheathing his Nikaran sword to its scabbard. After informing the butterfly girls of his leaving, he set off from the butterfly manor. After traveling for a day, Ryu reached the location around noon. A lake stretched out before him, its surface gleaming under the sun. On the other side of the lake, he saw a small town nestled against the shore. As he approached the edge of the lake, 
he found a few wooden boats waiting to ferry people to the other side. On the front was an old man in his sixties. Young traveler, do you want to cross the lake? The old man greeted him with a warm smile and asked. Ryu nodded gratefully, stepping into the boat and settling on one of the wooden benches. The old man expressed, if you want to reduce the cost, you may wait until three more passengers fill the empty seats, or you can pay the full amount. We can go, I will pay you in full. Good. The old man pushed off the boat from the shore and oared with a practiced hand. You don't look to be someone from around here, young man. Are you traveling from afar? The old man asked as they glided across the calm waters. Yes, I've come on business, Ryu replied. Old man, I've heard rumors of children missing in this area. Do you know anything about it? The old man looked around before replying in a hushed tone, Yes. I think it's their doing. He whispered, The demons. They lurk in this land, especially at night. What? Ryu feigned a surprised expression. How come the old man knows about the demons? Although demons were not an entirely unknown existence, many people were not aware of them. I know that many people don't believe in their existence. However, a friend of mine, who was a hunter, once encountered one of these creatures. He only escaped thanks to a sword-wielding person. After saying this, the old man unconsciously looked at the sword hidden behind Ryu's Hayori. Is it? It seems like I have to be careful in the town. Thanks for the warning, old man Ryu smiled. He confirmed the old man knows about the demon slayers from his actions. As they conversed, the boat reached the other side of the lake. Thank you for the ride, Ryu spoke and stepped out of the boat after paying the fare. Be careful, don't go out at night. Saying this, the old man pushed off from the shore and rowed back across the lake. Ryu gazed at the medium-sized town where the buildings are retro and traditional in style, with tiled roofs and wooden facades. Let's see if we find any trace or clue, musing, he stepped into the town. After roaming around the town, Ryu failed to find any traces. It didn't surprise him as unlike Tanjiro, he didn't have a sense of smell. But he has the Sharingan, which can help him to some extent. After finding a good spot that overlooks the entire town, he waited for the demon to attack. As time passed, the sky gradually darkened, welcoming the night. Ryu activated his Sharingan, monitoring the entire town while his sharp senses scanned for any anomaly. Hours passed before he finally spotted something in the distance. Found you, his figure disappeared from the spot, chasing the demon. As he closed the gap, he saw the demon fleeing from the town and into the woods behind the town. With an unconscious child in its grasp, it jumped from one tree to another in a swift manner. This demon seems cautious. Ryu chuckled inwardly. Let's rescue the child first. With lightning speed, he closed the distance between himself and the demon. His movement and sudden arrival startled the demon, but before it could react his Nikaran sword sliced through the air like a bolt of lightning. The slash severed the demon's arm, freeing the child from its grasp. Everything happened in an instant. When the demon reacted, it roared as the pain hit him from losing the arm. It looked at Ryu who stood opposite holding the unconscious child who was no older than seven or eight years old. Chapter 20, Frog Demon It's you guys. The Demon Slayers. The demon snarled while its bulbous eye looked around in vigilance and fear. After seeing no more demon slayers, it relaxed a little. At the same time, Ryu took a clear look at the demon. It bore characteristics reminiscent of frog bulbous eyes, gaping maw lined with rows of jagged teeth, web limbs and mottled green skin with a sickly sheen. Why do you guys always interrupt me during my snack time? The frog demon nearly roared. It seems like it killed a demon slayer before. Ryu mused. Observing the child's unconscious state, he speculated, he's unconscious. There's a possibility it can do poison. I have to be careful. Still cautious, the frog demon didn't confront him head on. It leaped to a nearby tree with surprising agility, using its webbed feet and powerful legs. Using the trees as a springboard, it leaped from one to another, increasing its speed until it became nothing more than a blur. As if sensing an opportunity, the demon lunged at him with uncanny swiftness. When it drew near, the frog demon's elongated tongue shot out like a striking serpent, aiming to ensnare Ryu with its sticky tongue liquid. Slash. But, Ryu reacted swiftly as his Nikaran blade flashed through the air at lightning speed, slicing the demon's elongated tongue into multiple pieces before it could strike him. The severed parts of the tongue turned into fly ash before it could touch the ground. Unfazed by the failed attack, 
the frog demon advanced toward Ryu with outstretched claw-like hands which glistened in a sickly green sheen. Its eyes flashed of craftiness as if it foresaw Ryu fall to the ground. Because its greatest advantage is its poisonous body, just skin contact or scratch is enough to stun anyone for a day. The last demon slayer that came looking for him fell victim to this very trick. He 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 he, the last demon slayer was very tasty. Let's see how this one tastes. After savoring the last one, it even took a liking to the flesh of demon slayers. It's tasty, and filled with abundant life energy far surpassing that of ordinary prey. But, its plan didn't go through as Ryu dodged to the side with a graceful sidestep avoiding the claw hands with ease. Allowing the demon to get past him, Ryu slashed his sword with precise accuracy. Shing! The demon's head fell to the ground with a thud. How? Aren't demons supposed to be stronger than the demon slayers? Its eyes were full of confusion as it watched its body turn into fly ash before its head disintegrated completely. Plus two demon points the system updated his demon points. Ryu found the demon slightly stronger than ordinary demons with special abilities granted by its frog form. It seems like only demons with blood demon arts or lower moon would pose a threat to me. He mused. Resting the unconscious child over a tree, he tried to wake him up but to no avail. Ryu doesn't know whether the frog demon's poison merely induces unconsciousness or poses a lethal threat to humans, so he asks his Kasugai Krokuro to find nearby Kakushi. After an hour, two Kakushi, one male and one female, came to the aid. As usual, their identities remained concealed. They swiftly attended to the child before voicing their opinion. The child is just unconscious. The poison is not lethal to humans, it only has a knocking and paralyzing effect. Good. Deliver the child to their family. No problem, it's our job. As always, thanks for slaying the demons. Saying the words, the Kakushi swiftly left the area carrying the unconscious child with them. Ryu. Ryu. Your next mission awaits. Head northeast. A demon has been spotted there. His Kasugai Kro, Kuro, delivered the message, urging him to walk. Come on, that soon. Give me some time to rest. I have been traveling for a day without any rest. Ryu complained but still began to walk in the direction. As he walked, Ryu checked his status panel. Name, Ryu. Physique, Nature Intermediate, 3%. Skill, Nature Breathing, Intermediate 16 fiftieths, Tech High, Advanced 0 slash 25, Sharingan not upgradable. Demon Points, 2. He saved the demon points he earned without using them planning to utilize them later on. Meanwhile, the Hashira of the Demon Slayer Corps were summoned for the semi-annual meeting with Yubayashiki. The meeting was scheduled to take place in a week. Currently, the Demon Slayer Corps is extremely short of manpower, particularly among the Hashira, with only seven active members remaining. To make the situation worse, the Flame Hashira recently retired, leaving a significant void in the ranks of Hashira. A week passed by. The Hash IRAs were gathered at a mansion situated in a remote location, far from the human population. When Kane arrived at the location, she found three Hash IRAs already present, Stone Hashira Jiume, Sound Hashira Tenjin Uzui, and Wind Hashira Sanamai. The stone pillar, Haim Jima Jiume had a strong and burly body. His appearance may even scar wild animals to turn tails and run. He was the strongest person within the Demon Slayer Corps. In addition to his extraordinary strength, he had also been in the core the longest. It was Jiume who had saved her and Shinobu from the clutches of a demon. Since that day, their lives had taken a drastic turn and it was them who chose this path. It's been some time, Haimjima-san, Kane greeted warmly, her voice steady and gentle. Kane, you haven't changed a bit. Haimjima Jiume replied. Kane's voice remains the same as he heard a few years back. Even after becoming a Hashira, her compassionate nature towards demons remains unchanged. How pitiful. Uzui san, Sanamai san. She greeted the other two. Hello Coco, I heard you encountered an upper moon. Is the demon strong? You should have killed it in a flamboyant manner. Uzui stated in a flashy manner. Snort, encountering an upper moon is a rare chance. If we killed it, it would weaken the demons to some extent. Why don't such things happen to me? Sanamai grumbled, stomping his foot in frustration. Thanks for listening.